Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm with Muhammad Bilal. Assalamu alaikum. Peace Alaykum be with salam. you. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, I'm great. How you been? Good, good. It's good to finally meet. Yeah, it's uh, it's big, man. I love the show and I uh, love watching, so it's good to finally be here. Mohammed Bilal. I'm very, I'm very, I mean, and, and you know, it, it didn't go, many people are, they're becoming nervous in the climate. So uh, some people, they would have been changed to Mo Bailey, but not with Mohammed Bilal. <laughs> Unrecognizably someone who's, you know, proud to be Muslim, named after one of the greatest, the greatest men to ever walk the earth, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And Bilal, we know Bilal, yeah. Yeah. And you got the name, beautiful, mashallah. Yeah, I'm glad my parents came up with it. Alhamdulillah. From you're originally from, you're born in the states. Yeah, I was born in Chicago. Born in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. So you're also now a UFC fighter. Yes. Yeah. I've been in UFC now for uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. For some time. How's that going? Good. Alhamdulillah. I'm on a three fight winning streak. Uh, got another one coming up uh, June first. So mm -hmm. should be fun. Okay, we're gonna get into. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> get. I'm gonna get uh, your reaction to to you know the whole bus incident that oh happened? yeah okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i heard something and i would take off from here and it all connects we'll connect it all so we're gonna go we're gonna hear this this is from uh you you know matt sarah former ufc champion yeah yeah he has that show and he has he had uh, one of his guests i forgot what his name is let's listen to this clip and then okay let me and i'll go into my question how's that yep sounds good you just came up with that that that, that word terrorist yeah. he's lucky he didn't get charged with the terrorist act oh that's why because he came from another country Mm -hmm. Came here with 20 guys yeah. to uh, 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 start trouble and attack Khabib. So he's lucky to get charged with that. Okay, so I want you to imagine this. Mohammed Bilal, he's coming over from uh, Palestine, right? He's got 30 brothers with him. <laughs> he's on a, So you're an American citizen, right? Yeah. You wouldn't do something like that, obviously, but just paint the picture now, right? Because we call out a lot of the double standards out there, you know, some of the open you know, hypocrisy that's around there. So I'm just, I'm just envisioning, okay, in your head, you got Mohammed Bilal. He's on a work, work, uh, work visa, right? Because yeah. Conor McGregor, he's coming from another country. He's, he's on a work visa, right? Yeah. I didn't mention it, but this just had my scoop, my, my, uh, my, my uh, I was just, I, thinking, but I heard, uh, I don't know who the co-host is from the, who was that speaking? The, the guy who was. Uh, uh, that was Matt Sarah and. Uh, what's his name? Ah, uh, man, I forgot what his name is, but uh, I know you're talking you know, about. Ta yeah, I know he, you're talking about. Though, yeah, he's an actor, a famous yeah. actor, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he said it. He said, man, he's lucky he didn't get charged with terrorism. What do you think would happen to you? <laughs> man. Yeah, or any Muslim. By, by, <laughs> any Muslim. Yeah, they're definitely getting arrested. Uh, we're, we're going to jail for a while. And uh, I think I, we're getting kicked out of the UFC. Uh, it's going to be in the papers as a terrorist. And it's going to. The headline's going to read Muhammad. That's going to be like the first one. Muhammad terrorist attacks bus. Guaranteed, 100%. So, I mean, like you said, it's a double standard. He's kind of McGregor, and uh, right now he's like the face of the organization. So, like the UFC, not gonna punish him like they would like any other UFC fighter. They would have been cut right away, hundred percent. But it's kind of McGregor. I know he brings in the money, but doing something like that, like you have little kids looking up to him, kids watching him, and then they see him do something like that. So they're gonna think the same thing that they could do something like that if they wanted to, or they could go to school and hurt somebody or throw stuff at windows, break windows, and nothing will happen to them just because they're looking at their idol, Conor McGregor, and nothing's happening to them, and he's laughing about it, and he's just having fun with it. So, I mean, now the UFC could play it off as a, a promotional thing now because, you know, they're going to play it. Him and Khabib on the fighting, they're going to play that bus stint the whole time as a promoting it. So, I mean, in the, in the long run, it's going to make them money, but on, on, like, a personal thing, I think it makes them look bad. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want that responsibility by being in the spotlight, you – obviously have people look i like what you said you know young kids you know kids are going to be looking at you and they're going to end up you know throwing a tantrum throwing you know whatever comes whatever is accessible hurt maybe hurt. he could have killed somebody you know what i mean yeah exactly that dolly goes through the window and it, it could have hit him in the head or i mean it cut one of them but and the other guy had a uh, glass go in his eye so that could have honestly blinded them or really put them out like i don't think like his first thing when i thought thought, thought about it at first I thought it was like a, a stunt and the UFC was like just playing it off. But then when I saw guys get hurt off it, I feel like it just went too far. Mm -hmm. I feel like he probably had the idea where I'm going to go out there and just make make a little noise, get a little attention off it. But then he just probably, he just went nuts on there and just started throwing stuff, throwing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Like you throw a trash can at the thing, you know it's not going to, the window's not going to break or anything like that. And it'll make you look, it, it, it'll promote it a little bit, but you're throwing dollies and uh, metal uh, spears or something through the windows. So I'm like... Yeah. That's, that's how people get hurt. Was there any formal apology to this day that you know of? 
No, nothing from Conor McGregor. Yeah. Like the the UFC said it, and Dana White said he's talked to uh, Conor McGregor, and like they had their heart to heart, whatever. And uh, he's apologized to Dana White or anything like that. But I haven't seen anything publicly from Conor yet. That's another thing. I mean, obviously, as human beings, we make mistakes, you know, and to be unapologetic in something that you should be a, a apologizing for. That's another th thing that lessons are learned from people who might do something like that. You're taking this person or anyone else as an example and they're setting bad trends and bad examples and now they do these bad things you do it and they're not even apologetic so you're not apologetic and you're just like hey uh, what's that famous statement he has i have uh, i'm sorry for absolutely yeah how's I'm that sorry go for absolutely nothing yeah or he said i want to apologize to everybody for absolutely nothing yeah. after all of his like trash talking he's like yeah. when he fought uh, eddie alvarez he was talking about his family talking about everything like that and then afterward he said i'm, I'm sorry for absolutely nothing so now that's like a, a big meme that people always post. Yeah. And then now you got also guys in the UFC now that are trying to like take after him because they see him getting all the money. So what are they doing? They're going to start talking trash to people, being unsportsmanlike, and just trying. And like you could tell for Connor, Connor's good at it. Like you could tell he's, he's good at it, he's practicing it. But some guys now are just trying too hard uh, to be that, that villain and uh, to beat Kobe, Kobe Covington. If you look at him... Uh, Talking about Brazil, talking about Brazil, saying it's a dump, saying the people from there are trash yeah. when he fights a Brazilian guy. And then, like, you could tell it's fake. It's 100% fake. It's just him trying to play a role as a villain. But you're putting all those people, like the Brazilian fans, everybody into, like, uh, making them all feel bad, making them all hate you. And it's going to make other kids think, all right, I can say the same thing. Or I'm a basketball player. Or I'm, a, I'm a, like, a 10-year-old kid, and I see him talking trash about a whole country. Why can't I do the same thing? about this other team or this school, like your whole school is trash, anybody from that area is trash. So it's just gonna make everything look bad in that. Yeah, and, and it goes back to you having a bigger responsibility and now you have the spotlight and now people are, you know, we're creatures of imitation and now people are imitating you in the bad things. I, li I like what this uh, cyborg, you know cyborg? Yeah. I've seen her actually wearing hijab. I don't know if you've ever seen her. Yeah. Saying mashallah, you know, God yeah. willed it and, and, and doing some really, uh, she, she actually, um, you know how, uh, Habib, and and this is what I kind of went away from from um, watching many of the the uh, UFCs and whatnot. But what drew me one time is I was uh, I was with uh, my cousins and family where they kept telling me about this this uh, Muslim UFC guy, and then I watched his fight one time, and what really you know uh, touched me was when he stopped afterwards and he thanked the Almighty, he thanked the Creator. The world, Habib. First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. Without God, we cannot do nothing. Everything is nothing. You know, number one, believe on your one God. First of all, I want to say thank you for God. God is number one. Other things is nothing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know what I mean? Instead of yeah. doing it's me, me, you know what I yeah. mean? And he made sajda. He went and he prostrated. You know what I mean? I was really impressed with that. You know what I mean? And, and then we see, I don't know if they did this before. And again, it goes back to like people setting good trends. She went out, she was feeding the poor. Yeah. She's not yeah. Muslim, she's Christian, but that's a good thing. We, we, we commend that. That's what we need more of. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, exactly. That was huge. Like after her last fight, she went out and I think she, uh, she was at like UFC two, 200 or something. And she went out and gave out like 200 meals to, to kids and the poor people out there. And that's something that the UFC should be promoting. That's the things that, man, that's, that's just a beautiful thing that she's going out there. She's promoting that. And like you said, it could be every single fight giving his thanks to giving his thanks to left for everything. And then even after his title fight, it's not me. It's, it's from God. That's what, yeah. he, that's what, that's what he, right after his title fight, that's what he's getting on the mic. And I think that's going to be huge that we got our first Muslim champion because it's going to show, it's going to put us in the limelight more. And it's going to show like how Muslims are humble and like, from when right now when you look at the the news or anything like that, they're always showing, shining the the light on all the negative things that happen to Muslims or guys that say they're Muslims and they're terrorists and they're all of this and they're all of that. So now shine the light on a, a great Muslim, a great humble Muslim that's a champion, that's a real champion, and he's still humble and still not changing like Conor McGregor, where Conor McGregor got his money now and he's becoming that that villain now and he doesn't care what people think of him or it's he has that attitude like I'm gonna do me no matter what. I don't care if I have kids looking up to me. I don't care if I, ha I just had a kid. I don't care about any of that now. I'm, I'm still the, the money maker, and I'm still going to be the businessman that I want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Khabib's more of a Muslim before. Uh, he's a Muslim before a businessman. So yeah. that's the and, big thing. And, and, and many people don't know it's, you know, and this is the unique thing about our show. We usually, because people, when they can't identify with something, it's kind of like the other. But once we, like, Muslim is simply one who is chosen to submit to the creator. That's it. Some people submit to money. Some people submit to themselves. 
you know, and their desires. But a Muslim is one who simply submits to the creator of all things. And that's what we're humbly trying to do. And tell me, do you get some bullying yourself now? I mean, uh, some people might not know I'm Muslim, Eddie, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and it's not in the name, you know what I mean? It's like uh, uh, you got Muslim community. It can be named Muhammad, can be named Mike, you know, it's it's someone, a Muslim can be from Italy, from, from Japan, from all over, you know what I mean? So that's one misconception many people have, that they think Muslims are Arabs, you know what I mean? But Muslims are, you know, from all walks of life. Do you now, because you have the name Muhammad, right? Bilal. Yeah. yeah. Do you get some people trying to bully you? Uh, like social media. Social, social media. Yeah, I, I, it's not, yeah. obviously not in yeah. person, you know, yeah. the, the, the keyboard tr tough guys. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're Calling always going to have them <laughs> keyboard tough guys that are, uh, always right right when I post like a poster or something like that of my next coming to fight and it'd be like uh, who's a terrorist how's that terrorist uh, like, so UFC letting a terrorist in the cyber bullying huh? yeah UFC letting a terrorist in the UFC I'm like what the heck but it's funny and then you have like guys that are randomly like make weird posts because uh, my sister she's uh, she works with a, a, fun, a fundraiser in Chicago it's called PCRF like Palestinian Children's uh, Relief Fund in Palestine mm -hmm. and then uh, like I'll post uh, something about that and then some guy made like a whole article about how that that fund is like promoting and uh, helping terrorists in uh, Palestine and Gaza, and I'm like, where like where do people just come up with these stories? Where they just waste their time to come up with a whole story, shining a negative light on a, Mo a Muslim just trying to do good. Yeah, let's go. You mentioned Gaza. Uh, many people, I, w I was very surprised that the mainstream media, you know, a lot of times they don't give much attention. Do and they recently there was a, a really good some awareness created. We're going to go into this clip and then we'll, we'll take it from there and see what you think. Yesterday, President Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had a phone call. And according to the White House readout that they put out afterwards, apparently the two did not talk about what was probably the most important thing for them to talk about. And that's the fact that just a few days ago, Israeli troops shot more than 750 Palestinians, killing at least 15. Yes. That is the correct number. More than 750 Palestinians shot, at least 15 dead. Now, this happened at a large protest along the Gaza border on Friday, where as many as 30,000 people gathered to begin what was planned as a six-week sit-in protesting Israel's blockade of Gaza and supporting Palestinian so-called right of return to Israel, a right that, I should note, the Israeli government says doesn't exist and, if enforced, would spell the end of the Jewish state. Now. Defenders of the Israeli military's actions will point out the protest was endorsed by Hamas, which rules Gaza in a thuggish and anti-democratic manner, and which uses violence and terror in its campaign against Israel. They will also note that at this particular protest, there were some protesters who threw rocks and Molotov cocktails and rolled burning tires at the border fence. All of which is true, but in no way justifies what Israeli soldiers appear to have done, which is, perch on a hill and pick off protesters with sniper fire. Much of it recorded for all to see. Like, for instance, this video, which shows live shots being fired at a teenager as he runs through an empty area to retrieve a tire. Or the shooting of this young man as he prayed near the border fence. The guy's praying. As far as we can tell from the video evidence, IDF troops in sniper positions rained down bullets yeah, on unarmed away. people. Again, and again, and again. And not only did the president of the United States react by saying nothing, not only have the vast majority of members of Congress. What are your thoughts? You're from, this is where your family's from. A lot of time you don't get much media press like this. The, the, the majority of the world is ignorant to what's really going on, the oppression. You know, it's one of the, they say the largest open air prisons in the world, you know, uh, yeah. Gaza. What, what do you, I mean, Honestly, just, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking when you see that, when you see yeah. what's going on down there. And uh, and you see them, well, I've seen videos where you see Israeli snipers, like, laughing uh, as, they're as they're shooting guys just running. It's like a game to them where they're just seeing kids running, and they just want to shoot them just as a game, like, for points or something like that. And we see something like that where people are just protesting. But it's, it's their land, and they're, they're getting held into a little section where they can't move, they can't go anywhere. Like, my sister went down there, uh, she just went down there last month for uh, a, a Palestinian uh, marathon. And uh, she said we literally had to go through about ten checkpoints just to get to ten, 10 checkpoints just to get to my grandmother's house, and we, we're we're getting stopped at every 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 checkpoint, getting checked for everything. Asked what are we doing here? Asked why are we here? And she's also because they went as a PCRF group, and uh, some people had to get sent back uh, from the airport. They get sent back to the USA just because their social media. If they posted anything, 
that like show them uh, protesting uh, Israel or anything like that. So like my sister literally had to delete all of her, all of her accounts before she went down there. So it, they're just trying to make it hard for like uh, Americans or other uh, Palestinians that want to go back to see their home. They want to they want to make it where American pa Palestinian Americans don't want to go back home because it's so hard. Oh man, I got I had to stay at this checkpoint for like an hour or two hours, or I'm I'm stuck at the airport. It's not one; it's ten. Yeah, well, or more. at the airport, at the airport, yeah. yeah, she she was stuck at the airport for three hours just wow. to get out of the airport, and then she said at every che every checkpoint you're gonna stop that too. And you're staying there for probably like thirty minutes, something like that, just to get checked. So they're making it where. If I'm in America and I'm a bit, man, what am I going to go down there for, man? They're, they're making it so hard for me to see my own land, for me to see my own family that's down there, grandmother or anything down there. And they're just making us hate to go down there because that's what they want. They want they want all the Palestinians to leave. And they want to just have all the land for themselves. Mm -hmm. Many people, they also use this, this opportunity to create a division and to try to promote that Islam, Muslims hate Jews and whatnot. But this is a Zionist agenda. This is there's a difference between Zionism and then you know many Jews. I've had like Rabbi Weiss, some of the chief, even the chief Rabbi of Palestine at that time. He was sending letters to the UN because he was showing how the Muslims and Jews they were living together in peace. Their children were go, you know, Muslims are watching their kids, you know. So now you have even I've had like Nico Pillet. He wrote uh, a book called The General Son. He's an Israeli Jewish, and he's speaking on behalf of the the uh, Palestinian people, this is just open oppression. Any American that goes down there and goes and looks and sees from themselves, this is something that the world doesn't really know because of many, much of the false propaganda, you know what I mean? And that's why this was really good report. This is something that's going on just recently. 750 shot, uh, these are unarmed civilians. It's sad, you know, so these are, you know, this is good, like people like yourself who are down there creating awareness about this. So, you know, the average American, good people, they don't want to they don't want to be sending their three plus billion a year to go killing innocent kids. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like you said, it's crazy. Like the average American doesn't know what's going on down there. So like when I saw, I actually saw this article, it was uh, on, this, on this video and I posted it last week on my like Facebook. And then I went back to practice or whatever and I had like Anthony and Sergio Pettis, uh, two big time uh, athletes and they're asking, no way, is that really going down down there? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, know. No, nobody knows. Like people are, people don't understand what those people are going through down there, man. It's, it's hard for them to, kids can't go out there and play down there. Kids, they don't have a normal life down there. There's always explosions, always bombs going off. It's kids are waking up every day thinking, am I gonna live today or am I gonna die today? It's not, I need to go to school or I'm, I'm gonna have friends, friends like, normal, like normal kids should be having fun today or I'm gonna go to the park today and play. It's, man, uh, Let's go protest today, and maybe we'll die. Maybe we won't die. That's that's what they're, that's how they're waking up every day down there. What's the food and the water situation also? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I'm also working with another uh, a project down here. It's called the Pious Project with Fahima Aref. He just posted that he's uh, he's uh, sending like liters of water down there and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of people uh, donating to that as well. Because I heard that when you go down there, on one side you have the illegal uh, settlements. That you had, like, for instance, I want people to imagine you got your home that your parents and your great grandparents passed down, and someone just comes and knocks on the door and says, You got to get out. Is this what's happening? It's, These I, are the illegal settlements that the UN has condemned, United Nations has condemned. And now for that side, you have now water, fresh water, you know, electricity, things we take for granted. And on the other side, on the Palestinian side, and this is not just uh, Muslim. These are also Christians who are being oppressed who are Palestinians. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I just saw an article the other day where they said uh, at the protest, too, there's Christians, there's Muslims, and all those guys. Uh, my grandfather, uh, he just passed away uh, probably like eight, nine years ago, and then uh, we, my sister went down there to, for, the, for the whole land lease, and she said she went down there to go see what what's going on with his land, how it's going to pass down to uh, his kids, and then uh, the government said, "Well, here goes your here goes the money for it. We took the land, and it was like probably like three thousand dollars for a, a huge piece of land that should be going for big money or anything like that." And they just gave it to him. They said, "We took the land. This is what you guys get. We're not. It's not like a negotiation where you get to sell it or anything like that." They literally took his land and they said, "This is the money for the that get passed on to the kids." Instead of my my grandfather, where he had, had a plan where it's it's gonna be huge, where he's gonna build condos for his kids to live on there, and for them to ha move their families down there to their homeland, but it got taken away from him mm -hmm. when he when he passed away. Yeah, this is very very sad. And people compare it to South Africa, the apartheid state of South Africa, and the same thing here: the open air prison, meaning that you have a wall, 
you know that that wall. How big have you seen that wall? How, yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's huge. How, how huge is that wall? Yeah, it's big. It's big. Yeah. So it's like they are trapped. They can't even leave, right? They're trapped inside. Uh, the water, you know, um, the basic things that we take for granted, they don't have. You know, the Palestinians are the, some of the most oppressed people, but they're still in there. You know what I mean? It shows their commitment to God, their commitment to, you know, uh, family, and they're not giving up. How's their spirit? Their spirits are strong. And this is what I think is driving many of the, the Zionist forces. Again, Muslims, we don't hate their uh, Jews. We don't, I mean, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, you know, at the pinnacle, the golden ages of Islam in Spain, you know what I mean? These were golden years for Jews. You have a um, professor, doc, Dr., I believe it's uh, Warrenstein. He said, he writes in, a, it's called the JC Journal in, in a how Islam saved the Jewry, you know what I mean? How Islam saved the Jewish people when they were, you know, being persecuted, the Crusades and, and the Inquisitions, they were being persecuted. They came into Muslim lands and the Muslims welcomed them. And same thing in Palestine. They were welcomed, but now you have even people who have been Holocaust survivors who also condemn what's going on to the Palestinian people. Muhammad Ali, he was yeah. also a strong supporter. Nelson Mandela, yeah. Yeah, it was huge. Like you said, we're... People nowadays assume that you hate Jews. Like I have people comment to my thing, oh, the UFC signed a Jewish fighter. Are you gonna fight him? And I'm sitting there like, no, he's not even my weight class. And they're like, oh, okay, but you probably hate him though, right? And I'm like, no, I don't hate. Like you said, I don't hate Jews. It's not. There's many great Jewish people out there that condemn this whole situation. Yeah. Jewish people opposed the occupation of Palestine from the very beginning. <laughs> It was in the 1930s, before the creation of the State of Israel, when the politics began, when the Zionists came into the region. Rabbi Zonnenfeld at the time wrote an article in one of the Arabic newspapers. It was called Peace and Truth, in which he wrote, he, wants to, he was the chief rabbi of Palestine, clarifying that the Jewish people have no demand over any place holy and sacred by the Muslims. Yes. Yes. In 1947, a year before the creation of the State of Israel, Rabbi Dushinsky, the chief rabbi of Palestine at that time, wrote a written testimony to the United Nations meeting in Jerusalem. And I quote, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition, our definite opposition to any Jewish state, to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. He was ignored by the United Nations at the time. Several, years, several months later, Rabbi Dushinsky sent a telegram to the United Nations in Lake Success that at least leave Jerusalem free. Yes. 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 And that request was respected. This was how Jerusalem was kept for decades. Jewish leaders, the Jewish communities worldwide, opposed the creation of the state and still do. The philosophy of Zionism is not only causing a catastrophe for the Palestinian people, it is a true disaster for the Jewish people as well. It's the, it's the people that are supporting like the Zionism. That's, that's what it's all about. Nobody knows, like, the Jewish religion and everything like that. It's all close. Everybody's, all these religions are close together. Uh, and they all believe, like, similar things. It's not like, I'm going to hate you because you're Christian, or I'm going to hate you because you're Jewish. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a hate hatred for a religion. I have a hatred for, for hate. So, like, the Zionist people, they hate Palestinian, they hate Gaza, they hate uh, Palestine, they hate Palestinian Muslims. That's, that's, a, that's a hatred. That's not a religion. Yeah, this is more of a nationalistic movement. A lot, many of them don't even uh, believe in, 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 in the Almighty, in God, you know. Uh, and, and that's why you have many good uh, Jewish people stepping up and speaking against Zionism and the occupying force there. And uh, may God Almighty help to uh, bring peace to the suffering there. And inshallah, we can create some uh, more awareness and some, some good can come from the little contribution that we make to to talk about some of these Shala. things where, where people are scared to kind of yeah. talk about. L let's go into Bilal, uh, uh, Muhammad Bilal, some of uh, his, yours, top tweets. How's that? Oh, yeah, sure. And we'll get your, your comments on that. Okay. All right, let's start with number one. So this is uh, 
I, this is something that you retweeted actually, but we'll say your top some of your top tweets and we'll we'll discuss it. I think it's very important. It's from and this shows you know staying connected to scholars, staying connected to people of knowledge. Where you're probably like, what's he what's he gonna <laughs> read? <laughs> Mufti Mank, we spend so much and invest even more in order to project the best image of ourselves to the world. Yet on the inside, many are crumbling and falling apart. Isn't it time to invest wisely and pay heed to what lies beneath? When when you posted this, when you what what do you when you hear this? What what do you uh, what do you take from this? What is it? Did yeah, I mean it's huge. Like I love following him. He, he posts like the, the powerful stuff, and like like you said, like most people are sitting there trying to uh, look good for the uh, for the outside world. Most people are sitting there. Uh, I need the fanciest clothes, fanciest cars, the biggest houses. Nobody's really exercising like their soul like you, you gotta like like i told uh, i just had an interview the other day where people are like how are you uh how are you gonna fast and train during ramadan because i have a, a a fight during that time and i said most of these guys are out here looking for an edge they're all looking for an edge with steroids or anything like that but i'm looking for an edge spiritually mentally and then that's how i get it through religion and power and stuff like that so most of these people are trying to uh, exercise and get look good for the outside world man but if you're spiritually strong and mentally strong, you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. what, what did you What did you think uh, about when they had? So this is very this is very powerful. What you said It's like focusing, and you get to see that you know m uh, many people. You can take Conor McGregor. And we got I got we got nothing against Conor McGregor or anybody. Just using uh, some of the actions that people do as an example, right? Yeah. We want the best for for everybody, but when people are focused more on the cars and the glitz and the glamour. This is talking about focusing on the heart, what's yeah. what, what's uh, within, because that's where true richness lies. And there's actually a hadith where the Prophet said, "True richness comes in, you know, um, contentment in the heart." You know what I mean? Someone can have all the money, all the fame, but they're still, you know, so depressed. They're empty because the heart. Yeah, as you can see, like you can see mostly like big time actors or uh, even The Rock. He talked about depression just recently. He talked about depression, uh -huh. and you, most people are looking at him like, "How is Rock depressed? He's the he's." huge he has the biggest movies in the world i'm pretty sure he's super rich has any but anything he wants can get anything he wants but if you're not there it's not in your heart if your heart's not content if your heart's not happy if you're not spiritually like just spiritually have a spiritual wellness to you then not, none of that matters like none of that outside stuff matters none of the materialistic stuff matters like you could be the richest guy in the world but if you don't have a family that loves you and just a, a connection with god what's the point of life at what point in your life did you see yourself going more towards that connection with your Creator, with God, with Allah? Alhamdulillah, I've been, uh, uh, I started young when I was uh, 13, and uh, like I, I had just had a, I just got connected with it. You know, when your your parents or somebody like my parents weren't the type to force me to pray or uh, uh, they wanted me to pick up the religion, but it wasn't like a force. Yeah. Where Alhamdulillah, I was able to read the Quran myself, and and I just connected with it. When I, once I read it and uh, it just got me the whole time my whole life since then uh, i just been spiritually connected with it and uh, alhamdulillah I feel like I do have a connection with God and I feel like whenever I am in trouble or anything like that I just think about that go back to the Quran and read uh, just different uh, surahs or anything like that and it'll just calm me down mm -hmm. many people they get blown away when we mention a lot of the commonalities with our Christian and other counterparts, you know, because we're all in this world together, you know what I mean? So we're brothers and sisters in humanity, we usually say. Yeah. When we, for our Christian brothers and sisters in humanity, when we talk about, you know, the deep love and reverence we as Muslims have for Jesus, peace be upon him. Obviously, we don't believe in him as God Almighty because he prayed like Muslims pray, he greeted like Muslims greet, he walked the earth and he called people to worship God. And we worship that God that Jesus called people to worship. But when we see that, and many people don't know that, that we love Jesus. You can't be a Muslim unless you love and believe in Him as a mighty messenger of God. Did you, when you share that, do people get blown away? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, now from my gym uh, in Wisconsin, I, I have guys asking uh, about what's going on because, say, I'll be in practice and uh, I'll, I'll stop and I'll go suddenly and they'll be like, man, uh, I just feel like a piece of trash that I'm looking at him pray and I'm just sitting yeah. there. Yeah, like they, they'll be and they'll ask me, like, so, like, what, what do you think? Of Jesus? Like, do you think what, when, it, when we have, uh, when we say Jesus is God, like, what do you think? I was like, do we still believe in Jesus? He's one of our prophets. He's not like I'm like we believe in Jesus. We have a love for Jesus, but he's not God. So th there's a big difference. And then they'll they'll be super surprised and they'll be like, "Oh, you guys believe in Jesus too? So you got, so you guys do uh, have Jesus in your Quran?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. It's it's all a part of there, man. But it's it's not God though." And then uh, so it just 
interesting when I when I have guys ask me about that, and then it interests them. And I also have a couple guys now that are uh, want to actually start fasting during Ramadan. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna try a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Uh, Sergio Pettis, where he said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, fast in Ramadan yeah. with you." Yeah. So tell us who's who's uh, Sergio Pettis. I know that's he's another big name in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, right? he's actually uh, number f- fifth ranked uh, flyweight. Yeah. Uh, in the UFC. W- wasn't he supposed to? He was supposed to match up with Khabib, right? No, no. Anthony Pettis was supposed to match up with Khabib. They're not. Th- that's not the same. Uh, per- they're, they're brothers. Oh, Anthony they're brothers. And Sergio, two, yeah. They're both in the UFC. Yeah, they're both in the UFC. Anthony's yeah. the former champion, and uh, Sergio's his younger brother. Okay. It's basically on his way to the title fight now. Yeah. Uh, but he's fighting in Chicago uh, in June. And he's talking about yeah. trying fasting. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, he's the one that said that. Where uh, like he'll come over our house, uh, our apartment, and he'll like play video games or whatever, and then I'll go pray, and then he'll say, "Man, just seeing you pray, man, I just feel like, uh, I feel like I need to start picking up things with with God and just getting connected spiritually." And he's yeah. like, "I think I'm gonna start fasting with you guys this year, man. Like, how do you guys do it and all this stuff?" And uh, he said, "I'm gonna start doing it. I'm gonna try to do yeah. it this year." So, see, so like that, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you take a time out. I mean, you got sponsors, right? In UFC Reebok yeah. now. You can't. Yeah. There's, there's no other sponsor that you can thank now in there, right? Yeah. Usually, I mean, you can thank your probably your trainers and all that. Yeah. But when we stop, I mean, for the world to know, we stop because you couldn't throw a punch if your nerve goes out. Like I got some, like now, you know, my nerves give me a little problem, so I feel can't even do, you know, too many push-ups. Got a little injury. I'm like, wow, just if a nerve goes out, right? Yeah. Or maybe you know, a nerve in the tooth. You ever have like a tooth? Yeah. Problem? Yeah. Yeah. God has given us, the Almighty has given us all these blessings. So we stop because without Him, we wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff. We wouldn't be able to walk, throw a punch, you know, uh, uh, talk, speak, taste the food, the taste buds that we have. All of these are blessings that many people, they don't, they don't think about. You know what I mean? They don't think about. So when you stop, it's beautiful. You stop and you go, you know, take the highest part of man, to take it to the lowest part and to humble yourself. And that keeps us humble yeah, right yeah. and to connect with the one who gave us life the owner of life the creator of the heavens and earth that's a beautiful thing and people that's the fitra when people see you praying look yeah. what happens that's yeah. like a form of dawah that's a form of like wow that's just connects people like i want to do that yeah 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 they man they were like man i want to just have that relationship with god i want to yeah. i want to just get to get to that level of where i could be that spiritually strong or mentally yeah. strong and it'll be like where uh i'll sit there and train during ramadan not drinking not eating stuff like that and they'll be like how could you do it? How could you do that? But uh, you, I got God on my side, man. Nothing's gonna yeah. happen to me that way, or anything like that. So that just it just shocks them when they see that type of thing. And this is exactly what Muhammad Ali said. Also, you know, yeah. uh, I I played a clip for when I had Musa Bektic. I played a clip where Muhammad Ali he was talking about how the training got to his head where he thought it was his training camp and everything and then he got his jaw broke i think it was by Frazier or someone yeah and that kind of humbled him and and then he said he really started to make his prayers he started to connect more with allah with god and then he said he felt unstoppable i didn't do that for the first Frazier fight nor the first norton fight really no sir my head got big and i started thinking it was my training camp and my boxing ability that kept me where i was at and god punished me and he gave me a good whooping he broke my jaw in the second fight and he got me whooped and knocked down in the frazier fight and i realized i wasn't that great after all so i had to get not only together physically but spiritually for this fight i've prayed every day for five days five times a day for the past uh uh four months and everything is perfect and if Allah's with me, it ain't no way no man can win. No way. Uh, man, I feel like that's somebody I can definitely relate to. And this is this is something that many people connect with. You know, that's why Islam is like, we say it's the natural way. It's like you're connecting only with the creator, a direct dialogue, no body in the middle, no intercessor, just God, just the one who created you, the same God that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and Muhammad, that, peace be upon him, just the last and final messenger. So it's a unique beautiful way of life and that's wonderful when people like yourself now they are looking at you you they are like amazed like what's he doing him out of all people he's stopping that's why you carry you know a a great responsibility people like yourself and uh, some of the other guys and i want to encourage that guys continue to you know to to do those little things that can make a a great impact yeah like like not forget yeah exactly like you don't you don't sit there and think that people are watching in that way but then i'll get like messages from young kids on social media or anything like that saying that you're a you're a great uh, role model to us and all this stuff and i'm thinking like man who am i who am i to be a role model to all these kids and then uh you think you realize that you are on that platform where you can speak for the people that can't speak for themselves 
So that's why I want to sit out there and go out there and support Palestine, still carry my flag with me no matter where I go on TV and pay-per-view or anything like that. And I get to that level, inshallah, and carry a belt and the flag at the same time. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think? There's, um, there's, uh, there was that attack a, a, a Muslim day. Was that what it was? Yeah. What did you think when you saw something like that? Yeah, man, I thought it was crazy. I said, yeah. I said, people really going to pick this up? And uh, are people really going to do this type of retarded uh, thing? And I was like, I didn't want to even get a, give it attention. But then when you got your parents and your mom that wears a hijab and you're like, you start getting scared. Like, man, what if somebody, like a, some, a crazy guy does do something stupid or try to pull out the hijab or do something crazy like that? But then you think... You just hope, and uh, and uh, there was I think there was a girl who got attacked in like a a hospital. You're talking about the hospital incident, right? Yes. For people that don't know what we're talking about, let's let's go ahead and let them see exactly, because seeing is believing. Did you see? So the guy, he just, she's wearing hijab. He just walks up. She was like about 19 years old at the hospital, place where you're supposed to think you're safe. Yeah. This is real. I mean, it's it's yeah. really that's why we when we talk about being unapologetically Muslim is to show that hey, we're Muslim. We're out there. We're your neighbors. We're your friends, colleagues. You know, uh, doctors, engineers, um, people who train with you, and that we're open. Come talk with us. You know what I mean? Not like we're hey, better than anybody. But at the time where people are like changing their they're that scared. They're changing their they don't want to even be called Muhammad. They're calling Mo. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're scared to be Muslim, and then that that helps that Islamophobia, plat- that helps that to grow and that just our voices get shut down even further. Yeah, exactly. Like you see that and then you think about your mom or somebody like that and you're hoping that people are like that guy that there who stopped the guy from, from attacking her and then you, th- you wonder, man, what if she was at her car outside in a parking lot or something like that and yeah. there was nobody around? How far would that guy have gone to, to beat her up or take her take it even to the next level and maybe even kill her? Like you don't know what's going to be around or what's going to happen, but then but then you have your mom that's tough and like, oh, attack a Muslim day. I'm still going to go to the mall. I don't care. But uh, just to have that attitude. So it's, it's funny when, you, like you said, where people are going to be unapologetically Muslim, they're still going to go out and still not let this thing bother them and not make them afraid and uh, keep them indoors or keep them away from other people. There was also a, another incident. I mean, there's a lot of these. These are just some of the ones we're pointing out. There was a Muslim woman who was, who was stabbed by her attacker and there was a $5,000 reward being offered to help catch the attacker, attacker who attacked a Houston Muslim woman during a hate-filled attack. The driver reportedly got out of his SUV, get this, and he began shouting obscenities and racial and religious slurs, such as, oh my God, it's a raghead, and he calling the N- N-word, sand, and, you know, after that, and other derogatory ner- uh, terms against Muslim, and he ended up stabbing the woman. And it seems like these guys, these, you know, tough guys they end up you know uh praying on the weak and innocent yeah that's what it always is like like i said i said uh if this guy would have attacked a a man that he thought was a muslim or anything like that it wouldn't have gone that way so they're they're gonna go on these these girls or girls that are wearing hijab and that's just that's like the highlight where how you know they're a muslim so they're gonna attack the girls that are having hijab that's why it's gonna it's it shows how how strong our women are that they're still, no matter what, they're still going to keep an eye. It's not going to stop them from wearing hijab or going out into the public or anything like that. They're still going to go to their work with the hijab on. Mm-hmm. So it just shows how powerful our woman can be. Let's let's get into uh, one more example, uh, because many people there's that false notion that uh, you know the double standards in the media. And it was a, there's good people always out there who call out some of these things. And it's one thing it comes from us, but then it's another thing when it comes out from people like this. I want you to. Get your comments on this. Another high school shooting yesterday, this one in Florida. 17 dead, the last report I saw. And everybody sends their thoughts and prayers again because that works so well. This is the 18th high school shooting in America this year, and we have 10 and a half months to go. We've had 290 since 2013. We average about one a week, but there's just nothing we can do. If it was a Muslim or a Mexican doing the shooting, how many new laws and how much money would we spend then to stop the madness? But since it's almost always a white kid, there's just nothing we can do. It seems like uh, it goes back to the when we started off with the incident, like painting the picture you on a plane, Muhammad. <laughs> it would have been connected to Islam. This is Islam. He's doing a jihad. He's coming, you know, uh, to terrorize the UFC now. He's a sleeper cell, right? And usually you see like many of these mass shootings, 
these criminal terrorist attacks that are happening on a daily basis. So they get very little press coverage, right? Then some lunatic, right? He goes, a uh, fringe element goes and does something, and all of a sudden, you know, Islam is equated. The guy's doing totally opposite. He could have been someone who's drinking, fornicating, doing all sorts of evil opposite to Islam. And now they use the worst example, and they connect it back to Islam. You see a lot of these yeah. things happening? Yeah, exactly. Like I said, uh, anything bad happened in Islam, they're going to shine a light on the, the Muslim aspect of it right away. But like the school shooting or even uh, the Vegas shooting where the guy was shooting out of the you remember window. remember that? How at many? The concert. And I'm sitting there like, how many people got killed in that? And they, they didn't say it was a terrorist act. Yeah. Or they didn't bring it up. They said the guy was mentally ill or his wife said he was depressed, clinically depressed. And I'm sitting there like, why are these guys clinically depressed but the, the Muslims or the Arabian guy that did it? Because I don't consider the Muslims the guy that do those crazy acts mm -hmm. or kill innocent people. They're not Muslims. But they'll say, they'll bring Islam right into it. Oh, I heard him say Allahu Akbar. That's like, that'll be like the headline. But with this guy, all clinically depressed or a kid that was uh, a loner or people that nobody, kid, nobody talked to the kid. He was bullied. So that's what forced him to kill all these innocent kids or kill all the innocent people at that concert. When the guy, you, you could tell the guy, they said the guy was a millionaire, like you said, the guy who did the Vegas shootings. He was a millionaire, he had money, so there was really nothing in there. But like you said, if he, he's not spiritually connected to anything, so he went out there and killed all the people for no reason. But they don't, they don't bring that part up. They say, oh, his wife says, oh, he was depressed. That's, that, that was a reason for it. And I, and I think it's important we bring these things up. So, you know, uh, good people, good-hearted people. The people who are who that that hate is just is just penetrated their heart. And no matter what you do, say a lot of times that just you know it it just manifesting itself from what's in the heart. Usually these people are bitter, angry, and they're just looking for somebody to you know escape go that anger. But genuine people, when this these double standards, uh, people like this are seeing it. Many more news reporters they're seeing it. Like what we had shown what's going on in Gaza. Yeah. I'm surprised this got aired yeah right so they're they're starting to see the hypocrisy you follow yeah. me and they're being more uh, sympathetic because they're seeing how muslims are being maligned how how the discrimination how the islamophobia is spreading it's a big industry it's like you know if you want to make money you just start bashing islam and muslims and you're going to get paid but it's important we speak up we be unapologetically muslim to show people that we're here make the human connection with us uh, and, and not go to some of these uh, these people who are just trying to to, to uh, divide us. You know what I mean? Uh, so I want to I want to ask you a few, couple more questions. I like my friend. Do you oh. like? I, I like Joe. Joe, you, yeah. You gotta know Joe. Yeah. What do you think we got in common? Oh. oh what do you see? What's he wearing? What's I'm wearing? The same shirt. It's the same shirt. Yeah. He's got my shirt. That's not Photoshop. <laughs> you know, I really like Joe. I don't know if you watch some of the previous shows that we've done. We've had some some scholars on. Joe covers a lot of good topics, and I wanted to bring this up with you because obviously you probably listen to Joe here and there. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you got to see the programs that we did. We brought on some Muslim scholars. We academically, we didn't bash Joe. We didn't put, we just went. And it's one thing criticizing, that's fine, but there seems to, he's made some deliberate attempts to talk about Islam and Muslims in a negative light. For instance, saying that Islam oppresses women. Islam promotes violence against women yeah. it, it it is it, it's very in in terms of like its suppression of women's rights and does islam oppress your your mother she, <laughs> no. the, the, your mom wears hijab right yes is she oppressed no what would she say right now if you asked her and she was joe rogan and and muhammad's Bilal, and she he's coming like cha a champion of women's rights and he's saying that hey come on take the hijab off you're, you're being oppressed you're in america what would she say to him or your sisters your sisters she, wear hijab yes, also yes. She, would, well, she would laugh she would think it's crazy like you said uh Heaven's at the feet of your mom, so you got to treat your mom that, at, at that level. Your mom's the highest queen in your house, no matter what. So uh, that's crazy how you would even think that or say something like that. Yeah. Uh, he talks about uh, acid in the face. A Muslim country, but even in these this country, this, these Islamic countries. It's burning. God, it's coming. That are throwing acid in the face. She suffered third degree burns when her ex boyfriend hired another man to throw acid in her face. These people that practice the Islamic religion. To have opened the door as you would normally, and one motion, bang, this is for you, mate. And it's a guy called, yes, and that's the, those are the words, David Phillips, which we'll, we'll get on to him in just a moment. These Islamic countries. The attack happened in daylight in downtown Vancouver, Washington. I am Islamophobic. Said it. That's true. But if it's some imam who thinks that, you know, women should cover themselves up like they look like Jabba the Hutt or what is it? Was it Boba Fett? Whichever one. Whatever it is. Please direct your hate mail to Joe Rogan. 
you know as acid, acid yeah. you heard of this acid of face like uh islam promotes you know and he he shows these examples and trying to connect so the average person that's the scary thing it it makes it seem it feeds into the islamophobia like islam and is promoting violence is promoting the oppression of women so now these nut jobs out there they get this because he's got the, one of the biggest yeah. followings out there so they hear this stuff and this i mean this obviously fuels the division uh, even more in the misunderstanding and the hate and and then you have uh, boss mosques being vandalized women being attacked and all these things so we're trying to reach out to them we we uh, academically we refuted many of the 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 false statements that he had made uh, honor killings there's no honor and killings yeah. this is another one what do you have to say about that you're, yeah. just, you're not a scholar or anything but when you hear this is just you know your regular practicing muslim when yeah. you hear him say stuff like that what what goes to your mind it's nuts like you said islam in, in general it means peace so like when he says when people think that or we kill because it's in our religion or we we oppress our, our family our, our wives or our mothers or anything like that that just nuts because it gives people like a false notion and false. Why? Why you guys forced her to wear the hijab? No, they they choose to wear the hijab. My sister chose to wear the hijab when she was 15 years old. She chose. Like I said, my parents aren't gonna force us to do anything. She she uh, read the Quran. She she believed in it and it, she did it herself. That's it's her responsibility if she wants to do it as herself. We're not gonna force anything on it. And then but like they'll see like cultural things. Where you see like Saudi Arabia, where they say, "Oh, women can't drive" or anything like that. It has nothing to do with religion. That's that's just a we culture. cover. We actually cover that also. We cover oh. that that myth he brings up. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's like that's like a culture thing. That's yeah. in that area. It's not like no women around the world are are able to. No Muslim women are able to drive or get jobs or anything like that. My sister's a pharmacist, so she graduated school. Alhamdulillah, and it has nothing to do with us forcing her or her not being able to do anything. She mm -hmm. she did it on her own. Yeah, beautiful. So if you had a chance to, you have, do you see Joe when at the at the UFC? Do yeah, I see him at the fight some, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, tell him, uh, give him our peace. Tell him we send him uh, hellos from us, <laughs> and we'd like to hopefully. I'm sure this has gotten to him because we've done a few of them. We actually had Muhammad Hijab. You know Muhammad Hijab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him also, and we invited him to invite him to invite any of. We have access to some of the top scholars in the world. Okay, we don't have to go outside of America. We got them here. Yeah. So I think that would be fair and balanced. That if he brings on a Muslim, a scholar, an academic, and let's go. I think the audience would love this. Yeah, yeah right? that would be huge. Yeah, wouldn't that be huge? Yeah, he'd get so many more Muslims to come in, and also his audience probably want to know what's up with this. Why? 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 Yeah. Let, let's. That's in essence of keeping it fair and balanced. Yeah, bring up these things and let's go ahead. Let's talk. And he's that type of guy. Like I feel like he would be the be the one to want want to do that debate yeah. or bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what I mean, instead of bringing all of these uh, uh, people, uh, you know, he had someone on there. Uh, let me just show you one thing. Radical Islam gets thrown around. Right. So radical Islam simply means I really take my Islam seriously. Mm -hmm. And now this person who he brings on frequently, yeah. he pretty much says it pretty much uh, if you practice Islam, that's what it translates yeah. to. You know, you're pretty much a radical. These are, I mean, this stuff is dangerous. Okay, so do you take your Islam seriously? Yes. So that would equate that you're radical. So yeah. <laughs> see how ridiculous. So yeah. those are the kind of, you know, the, the things that are very laughable. It just doesn't make sense that someone would, I mean, I like Joe. I really, I, I don't like have any hate. I don't like the actions that he's doing towards, you know, something that yourself, me, and uh, 1.78 billion people in the world, you know, love and practice and intellectuals who have come to islam not just blindly they have investigated they've seen that the quran is a book from the creator it cannot be it's tamper free tamper proof it has all the evidence and signs that it's indeed from the creator and it's just it's you know the um harvard university has an ayah from the quran talking about for their law academ academy these are the most intellectual lawyers that they're producing talking about the, the ayah, the verse on justice. Mm. Did you know about that? No, I didn't. That's profound, you know what That's I mean? Pretty, yeah. Yeah, so uh, obviously there's this gap that needs to be bridged, and I thought, wanted to get your, your thoughts on that. Yeah. Maybe you can send them our hellos when you see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'll bring, yeah, for sure. But like uh, like you said, even my la my last fight was uh, last July, and it was right after the Milan. But like, it just brought attention to his head too, when he was like, because he commentated it, and he was like, wait a minute, this guy trained during Ramadan for this whole, his whole camp. But it just brings like attention to it to the yeah. public. We're like, 
Now people are, what's Ramadan or anything like that? They'll Google it. They'll see what it is. Yeah. But like you said, if we get on that show, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you. Thank you for uh, coming on the Dean Show. Yeah. No, I appreciate you having me. Hello, awesome. bless you. The Creator bless you. Thank you very much. You want to, you want yeah. any shout out to anybody? Anything? Uh, no, just thank you for everybody who, uh, who supports me. And uh, uh, we're, we're Muslim. We're here and there's nothing to fear. <laughs> I like that. We're Muslim. We're here. There's nothing to fear. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you so it. much.